on education leave for Fusion here in the UK together. Vesku, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, yeah. Uh, my name is Vesku Nopanen or Vesa Nopanen, but hey, everyone calls me Vesku. I'm a principal consultant and uh, on the metaverse and future work working at Sulava slash Broad Horizon. So welcome from my part as well. And we have our third host online, Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Sharon Sumner, Business Applications MVP and CEO for Business Cloud Integration. Nice to see you. It's great to have you, Sharon. So before we get into this table talk, we're going to have a little bit of a recap. If you didn't see the sessions from yesterday, some of the main talking points about the metaverse, you know, Vesa and I watched the session several times. We really ground into it to see what we were getting and what we can expect in the future. So just to cover a couple of these things. Number one, OK, Mesh for Microsoft Teams is coming in a few months time. You know, the expectation is going to be here sometime within the near future and it's going to be a, a reality. Number two, avatars are your presence in the metaverse. Vesa, what do you think about these avatars? Uh, I think they are really great. And what we saw in those avatars, it's something totally different. We saw in outspace usually. But what I really enjoyed about having us several avatars, there are actually three, so we can choose the one we want to join the appropriate session. So we don't have to have our laser suite or business suite in, in every occasion. And that was a great something I picked up from there. And the other part is that if you look at that photo, uh, that lady has the prosthetic arm. So you can really create an avatar that express your, expresses your true identity in that way. In addition, we were told that you could be able to connect to the metaverse on any device. So whether you use a tablet, whether you are kind of using your laptop, whether you use a HoloLens, it will be accessible to us in many different form types. Last but not least, OK, we saw that metaverse is already being used today by a number of organizations. We saw the case study for Kawasaki uh, and industry solutions. So before we jump into the table talk and we set the rules, Vesa, do you just want to say about the importance of these industry solutions? Oh, oh they're, they're really important. And I think the main point there was that you can do that already. You can already use Azure services for Metaverse, you are building digital twins, you are doing analysis, you are doing uh, kind of a simulations. You, you can run those things and machine learn or, or teach the AI to understand, okay, what's the correct situation and being able to interact there and having that digital twin there, that's really the key forward. And, and I think that's brilliant case what they were showing up because they were picking up things that human would have to watch and do. And instead we can kind of have the machine and AI help us there. That's perfect. So we want to make this session as much about you as possible. We've done all the talking, but we're going to set a couple of ground rules, OK, for this table talk. So if you haven't been to a table talk before, a table talk is all about getting your voice and your opinions. OK, this is not about us or what we think. We want to hear what you have to say. So we're going to start with a warm up question. Everything is recorded, so please, you know, kind of we just have to be mindful of the code of conduct that was up at the beginning of the session. Try to keep your responses to one minute. We want to try and get as many people uh, opinion as possible. But what this isn't is, is that this isn't an RC expert session. This isn't a roadmap session. So in other words, we are going to have these predefined questions and we want to know your opinions on this. So you ready to go, Vesa? Yeah. Sharon, you ready to go? I can see her nodding there. She's Sorry, ready to go. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> there she is. OK, so we're going to get with a warm up. This is the first question. Given that many are returning to the office, will the metaverse be a place where we will regularly work in the future. OK, Vesa's going to kick off. What do you think, Vesa? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what we saw already yesterday in those keynotes, we can see those meeting rooms. We can see the drop-in room, like a kind of operational, situational room where we can have all that information. We drop in to see who's available. And, and we can have that spontaneous interaction with people. Sending a Teams chat is not that uh, spontaneous interaction, but instead I can come here and talk with Chris, talk with Chirac and, and, the, and all of you. So, so that's definitely the thing. We are going to be working there because this is making the hybrid work much more personal and, and we can have that interaction we miss in regular Teams calls. Okay, that's perfect. So thank you very much, sir. 
let's extend that out to the audience. So who wants to give their first opinion on this question in this table talk? And you think this is going to be a place. Yeah. And of course, uh, people online, feel free to use chat. Put in your answers there. Sharon will highlight and summarize uh, your opinions from there. So let's get started. Yeah. Let's have we go. Off we go. So you're saying kind of 80% is as a, as a figure, 80% in terms of using the metaverse, they're going to embrace the metaverse? So you, you so four out of five people you think in your organization are going to embrace it, they're going to want to be in these immersive worlds? Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. Anyone else? Anyone else at all has got a pin? Yes, yes, please. So just for the people that are online, what we're saying is, is that you think that there is going to be more interest from the younger generation, and when they come to work, they're going to be expecting to work in the metaverse as an alternative. Uh, actually, it's not a kind of expectation. They are already in the metaverse. They are accustomed to the online games. Uh, they are there. They are happening. They are doing their homework. Our teenagers are doing the homework in the metaverse. They're dropping in to see who's available, have that spontaneous chat. So yeah. You're absolutely right. The millennials are going to rule over us so, uh, on that path. Sharon, are we seeing anyone online? Any opinions online given this uh, given this question? Yeah, I mean, Alex Bolton did give a very similar opinion, saying the millennial generation may adopt a virtual meeting, but uh, thinks the boomers may struggle, um, which I think is is a fair point, right? Hey, you know, I'm kind of halfway in between, you know, my, 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 my father was the boomers generation. Uh, my son is only five years old. I'm somewhere kind of in the middle. Have we got any more opinions on this at all? Uh, yeah, we had one. So you think, just again for our kind of studio audience, that uh, you think that in hybridizing the assets, the metaverse is going to be a good place to have those assets and to interact with them for our businesses? Yes. Yep. That's perfect. Before uh, we... Yeah, and, and he was mentioned about the confidentiality and security. And of course, as we talk about Microsoft Metaverse, it's run on the Microsoft Cloud. And, and there's the security and compliance and everything. Basically, we are talking about the hybrid world and, and being able to access those assets from every, everywhere and being secure and confident about that. Is there anyone here of the opinion where they think that the metaverse is going to be a struggle in order to get inside their organization? Does anyone here kind of see um, the, their organization or might not embrace this as if we were to introduce it tomorrow? We're getting some opinions on that online, Chris. Um, people saying that there'll be some fear towards the metaverse as they've only just got teams. And we've got a conflicting opinion here saying absolutely not going to be introduced because um, you know, somebody owns a VR headset, this is Mark Powell, owns a VR headset and absolutely wouldn't want to mix the two. So I think we've got some real nice conflicts there going on. Yeah, and we're going to explore them in a couple of the future questions. So thank you, everyone. OK, for the warm up question, let's move on to question number one. Vesa? Yeah, what benefits or opportunities will Microsoft Mesh and the Metaverse bring to you and to your organization? So we're kind of thinking about um, 
what are the upsides to all of this? What benefits do you see with this technology? I mean, again, going into the interfocus, they gave lots of examples of how Metaverse can is being used today and how it's bringing benefits to, to businesses. But we're interested in you, how you think, having seen this technology, having seen what's happening in Mesh for Teams, do you think, what's your first impressions in terms of the upsides? So anyone from the audience here would like to kind of give their opinion on this? Yes, sir. when you go into a meeting, um, there'd be a certain etiquette you can follow within that meeting. Yes. This is kind of now almost working outside of those boundaries, um, and I think that's um, some people can embrace that, engage with it, and, and run with it, and some people might be a bit fearful of it. Then go back to the original warm up question where that, that 20% that love the, the, the physical interaction, meeting with people face to face. Mm. I can see the benefits of, 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 of some of the things that we see there today as well. Absolutely can see some of the benefits. I guess it's how we bring people. So do you think that we can like kind of we can only realise the full benefits in the adoption and kind of lead in our users through it? Exactly that. I think people have got to realise and see the benefit of that. Once yeah. they do. Absolutely. Yeah, it's basically uh, change resistance you are talking about. It's an adoption project because this is about people and how we are going to be using that technology. What kind of benefits we see. So, to, so summarizing is that, okay, how people will be adopting that. There will be people who are afraid about that or they don't feel confident about that or they just feel, okay, it's not necessary. But I think with mess for teams we are going to be seeing those kind of hybrid meetings where some people are attending normally through Teams, some people are in the immersive room, and some people are in physical rooms. And I think that takes it forward. But I want to add something uh, from my part, uh, benefits or opportunities. The big one, what's going to be there for many organizations is tra training and learning. Because you can bring in so many good examples uh, from the micro and mi micro and macro world. You can go to the cell level or microorganisms, or you can go to the space and bring that uh, augmented information to the learning process. It's, it has already studies that it's it's going very well and and it's going to em amplify the learning. Let's get some more opinions from the yeah. audience, okay? So from this side, because I think we had one from this side. How about this side? I'm going to kind of put the vision down here. Anyone got their uh, kind of opinion on the benefits? Yes, sir. So social anxiety and and do you think in IT, I mean, because I was watching a, a session last night with Peter Rising uh, and um, Megan Strand, it was on anxiety uh, and autism. And, and this is something that is, is, I think that we're all pretty kind of familiar with in IT in this environment. Do you think that the metaverse can be a lot beneficial to, to those people? That's amazing that it's, that it's helped them like that. And you've often found those people that have found that through as Vesta yeah. notion gaming and stuff like that. How about any more opinions? Yeah, I, I will add to that uh, before that is because what you are talking about also is that Metaverse is bringing the diversity and inclusivity to everyone who has these social challenges yeah. and, and introverts and who, who don't necessarily want to have to come around. But uh, before we, uh, I think we should let Sharon say something. Absolutely, Sharon. How is it looking out there on the uh, on the online? 
Yeah, I mean, I was trying to ask the question about how do people feel about the the mental health benefits of this, because we don't always feel like being on camera, right? And there are certain, you know, youngsters in an organisation and those people that wouldn't normally take part, that if they have a presence rather than just a circle with your initials in it, you know, is that going to make more impact? And that seems to be getting a, a positive response. Um, but I think, you know, again, there are some definition here between the types of things you can do in the metaverse. So, there's the avatar side of things and the whole alt space. Will we need a headset versus the whole uh, collaborating on a on a mesh vision uh, of something together? So there's definitely two sides of this discussion. Sharon, do you think one of the big benefits here and the upsides of mesh for teams is the fact that you don't necessarily have to uh, be in 3D, that you can also experience it through a 2D environment as well, which is a lot more familiar with people? Yeah, I mean, that is the whole thing. So everybody feels like there is this barrier to entry with the headset, but that's not necessarily the case with this. Right. And I don't think that's necessarily been uh, promoted enough that there isn't that barrier. Everybody isn't going to sit here in a in a virtual world, so to speak. Yeah. And I think I will cut uh, in between there and get get a show of hands. How many of you think you will be or most of the people will be using virtual reality headsets on Mesh for Teams? On, uh, OK. Yeah, uh, next year, two, and two next year. How many will be using that? Yeah, and that's a great example. We had one hand showing up because uh, the majority of people will not be using a headset. They will be joining through mobile devices, tablets, PCs, because that, that's the way until the headsets are something like more socially acceptable and a lot smaller. Imagine that you can join a meeting in the metaverse through a mobile phone, through a tablet, yeah. through a laptop, you know, yeah. it, it, you have more than just the headsets. So in terms of accessibility, in terms of inclusiveness, do you agree, Vesta is one of the yeah. biggest? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had some uh, comment there, Akro. No, I didn't forget you. So you'd like to kind of see a world whereby we have the in-person and then we've got the rich metaverse experiences that go beyond the the kind of just the standard teams. That's uh, yeah, and, and to summarize, it will also reduce the need to travel to those meetings. So you don't you only travel to those meaningful in-person meetings that really give the value. That's basically the same we were talking about yesterday, how, how often uh, we would go to the office. And, and that was the latest work trend index uh, study Microsoft did. There needs to be an effort and uh, like a value going in person. So you use the effort for commuting or traveling between countries. OK, so I think we've covered really well the benefits. Now let's move on to question two. What do you see as the challenges or barriers to using Microsoft Mesh or engaging with the metaverse? So we're going to take a slightly different tack. Yeah, I think Sharon, could you? Express yeah, your... no, we've, got, we've got a lot of stuff coming on here. About, <laughs> okay, let's roll out. You know, so so what is the point in in using this instead of just Teams as it is right now in terms of that kind of two D experience? I think that's kind of the thought, and also that the definitely the barrier to entry is this headset experience. Um, that's what's coming across here. That's perfect, Vesa. Do you want to? Uh, yeah, of course. And people will think about okay, what's the benefit if you think about the virtual spaces today? One of the benefits uh, is that we, I can go uh, our real world. I can go next to Chris. We can talk. We can have interaction here on the stage. We can do high fives and, and everything like that. 
and we can replicate that with our digital wins on the metaverse. But on Teams meeting, and we can have several groups, spontaneous breakout rooms, like people going to one corner, or some people to go to talk about the metaverse or mess there, and some people talk about Azure there. So that's one of the benefits, it's the flexibility. And on Teams meeting, it's like one talks, everybody else listens, because it's not designed for a simultaneous speaking in different groups because it's one for all kind of approach. Anyone from the audience here would like to, if they can project with inside their organization, what's going to be holding people back from using this once it's released? What's going to stop them? What's going to be the negative attitudes that you're likely to come across? Do we have anyone that hasn't kind of spoken at this point? Have we got any hands? Any hands at all? I got somebody online if you're missing. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So John Moore online has kind of nicely laid out the challenges for us in terms of HR policies around avatar representation, internal, external um, access, harassment, data protection, accessibility, being too, Im too immature. Um, you know, it's just quite a good list. <laughs> Things that is, there, is, gonna... there, is, is there one, Sharon, that, that you personally think um, that is going to be the, the, a lot of organisations? If you could kind of typify the kind of the biggest barrier, what do you think it is? Um, I think it is going to be education, right? It's the same with everything. And, and I agree with the audience here online in that you've got to move away from it looking gimmicky. Um, and like the next big thing. So for people to take it seriously, we've got to align it to those serious business benefits like mental health. Um, but there's going to have to be governance around it. And I think that will be a problem. Governance yeah. is going to be a big thing. Yes, yeah, please. but you had one comment. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, for the for the online audience, so you need to come. Uh, basically, metaverse is now going technology first, and it needs to be kind of turned uh, reversed in that way. So it's going to be business and business goals first for people to start kind of adopting it more. Personally, one of the things this. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. Sorry. Hey, this is going to be look, looking looking to have a conversation with you as <laughs> oh, you know you two on a, the benefits. But uh, one yeah. of the points that I think that is quite can, kind of for me is going to be a barrier is, is going to be the behaviours in the metaverse. You know, we've been given the new technology. How are people going to use it? Because I'm sure that many people are going to use it in a very kind of professional and upstanding way. But how are people going to design their own avatars? Are they going to have control? What happens if they get an avatar that they feel doesn't reflect who they are? You know, so and things can be considered to be offensive with inside that. So I, I'm kind of interested in the ethics and the behavior side of things. Should we move on to the next yeah, question? Yeah, let's move on. Uh, so what are what are the risks? How you, we can keep us and ourselves safe in the metaverse? This is a kind of big topic. We have seen uh, news about this uh, happening harassment and everything else. But of course, let's start. Anyone from the audience? Yeah. So you are basically talking about how you express your avatar in the metaverse in a way it reflects your real personality. But, and, and yeah, keeping the distance and everything like that. Okay, uh, do you want to, okay? Thinking about it, I'm thinking, when you have a certain trait of personality, you encourage people to be with you. Wouldn't this give people a friend to say, 
they fired a person of color. I want to hide it. And I might create an avatar, which is not me. So that sort of, in a negative way, stops people from being themselves. And it's the need for creativity. I think it might stop people. If they're not themselves, they're not, they can't be very creative. I love and this. I'm not necessarily saying mm-hmm. it's badly bad, but there are, these are some risks. Of I love that. Aspects. I love that point. You know, in person, we are who we are, and there's no way in order to be able to change that, right? But there's a gap in the metaverse where we can kind of almost, we often talk about the benefits, don't we, in terms of that people can be who they want to be in the imagination, but also as well, people can almost obscure and hide who they actually are behind that as well. I think that's going to be a big talking point, don't you, Vesa? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a huge talking point. I'm very interested to talk with the uh, people here on uh, in person about that later. But Sharon, b- b- Sharon. before we run out of time, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's some good points coming through online. And I think it is um, largely considered that it's about supporting the users, uh, giving enough information on, on what's acceptable and what's not. Uh, we've got a lovely chap on here called Adam, uh, who you both know. He's talking about... Um, you know, making it not too different and making sure that we've got training and cultural awareness, you know, around what's good and what's not. Yeah, I, I think that that's a very good point. And I think technology can also help to keep us safe uh, because that's something we need to have that social distancing in virtual world as well if we want that because we don't want to be we feel overwhelmed. And there's a need for moderators as well. I had I re- just re- recently read an article about uh, pe- a person moderating virtual uh, metaverse events. And yeah, you need to pay attention, just like you need to pay attention here in the real rooms. Okay. One, one last important question that's come up, Chris, is has anyone asked why avatars <laughs> have no legs? <laughs> Sorry, Sharon, can you repeat that? Um, has anyone asked why avatars have no legs? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, lots of people have asked. Uh, I guess it's about the computing power. Uh, there's lots of polygons you need to add, and it might look a bit <laughs> funny if uh, our, my, our legs are kind of half through the roof, uh, the, the floor. Uh, or actually, when I'm looking at my team's picture, I don't know if it's good, but I'm kind of a uh, cut through. Uh, through the head here. Well, one thing that we did like to see, Sharon, was that we loved seeing a shot yesterday of an avatar with a bionic arm, uh, yeah, which you can see for somebody that could be for a, a member who didn't have an arm, whereby they can have both in the metaverse. But look, we've got a couple of minutes to go before we wrap this up. We're going to have a quick fire round on the question. We just want kind of one, two word answers on this. What actions can we take to facilitate users actively engaging in the metaverse? Yeah, Sharon, do you want to stay, say yours first? I, I think from everything that people have said in chat and from me, it's about having a valid use case uh, for businesses. Valid use case for businesses. Anyone else? What else can we have? What can we do? Singular words. Sorry? Real examples. Real, Real world, world examples. examples. What else? Education. Education. What else? Yes. Use policies. Use policies. What else? <laughs> Anything else? Make it simple yeah. as part of the education. Then, thank you ever so much. I think that takes us um, to the end of our session. Hmm. We'll try to adjust these later. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess we had an AI doing some changes or something like that. But hey. <laughs> We've got some resources. If you yeah. know, look at the book of... Uh, the book of news that comes out that's got all of the announcements about what's happening here at Microsoft Build. We've also got, if you want to go into more depth, MS Docs. Then, of course, you've got the Build site itself with all the sessions. Most of those sessions are on demand. You also have, as Sharon put in, the Mixed Reality Developer Program. Yeah. And we couldn't help and resist Mr. Metaverse himself. <laughs> His blog at mymetaverseday.com. Yeah. Vesa, Sharon, have we got anything else to add? Uh, I will be publishing a new post probably today or tomorrow about mess for teams findings. Uh, uh, no, that's it from me. I do love the idea that Adam came up with that you get legs with E5. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you get legs with E5. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a great one. Yeah, thank is. you ever so much, everyone. We'd like to thank you for coming to our session. It's been great. You've been a great audience. Lots of thank great you. questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.